confrontation. Survival. For the predators of the Mala Mala Reserve, this is daily life. Dominant males fight to hold on to precious territories. Mothers struggle to make sure their young survive. To add to the peril, Trout is on their doorstep. In the face of starvation, disease, and battles for territory, who will survive another dry season in Mana Mana? borders the Kruger National Park in South Africa. It covers 160,000 square kilometers of lush, rich savanna. The Sand River snakes through the park from north to south. The plains are crowded with prey and predators, fighting for the same thing, survival. Scar and Tyson are legendary brothers who dominate the north of Mala Mala. This is their turf. Three years ago, they evicted the last rulers and have defended their territory ruthlessly ever since. But power is hard to hold. The brothers are under constant threat from young rivals itching to take over. At 10 years old, Scar and Tyson aren't the fighters they used to be. Tyson is especially weak, not just with age. It seems as if disease has begun to destroy his fighting spirit. From the top of Split Rock, the grizzled campaigners keep an eye out for danger. As dominant males, they protect the lionesses in their pride, but protection doesn't come free. Shira is the oldest lioness in the Split Rock Pride. She and her sisters don't just raise Scar and Tyson's cubs, they have to hunt for their food as well. Six lionesses, two young males and three new cubs make up this extended family. Shira is the proud mother of two daughters and a son. The lives of the whole family rest on Scar and Tyson's shoulders. In the event of a takeover, the new rulers don't just oust the old guard, they kill their cubs to make sure the lionesses will breed with them as soon as possible. Predation, savage takeovers and disease. The king of the beasts face harsh survival odds. Only one in five cubs reaches adulthood. They have to tread extremely carefully. There's danger everywhere. Lila is a two-year-old leopard. Her territory overlaps the prides, and although she fears the lions, she would kill their cubs if they cross her turf. But Lila needs to watch her own back. She inherited this 20 square kilometer territory from her mother and has just begun the solitary life of an adult leopard. Alona's life is precarious. If she gets injured, she'll starve. And the lions she shares her territory with won't tolerate any other predators on their turf. The lions may kill her if their paths cross. Luckily, leopards are skillful climbers. This is one part of the territory where she's safe from the neighbors. Lila's ready to breed for the first time and it hasn't gone unnoticed. 
two suitors are vying for her attention. Kubala has dominated this territory for three years, but there's a challenger to his throne. A young rival, Drifter, wants to take over. Their territories overlap, and they both want power, passage, and the right to mate with Lila. Drifter's challenge failed, but he'll be back. The threat to his title isn't Kabbalah's only problem. Shadow is the hyena matriarch in Split Rock. Their territory overlaps both the lions and leopards. And they don't hesitate to steal from any of their neighbors. So many territories overlapping, Mala Mala is a tinderbox waiting to explode. All it needs is a spark. It's May, the beginning of winter and the start of the dry season. Food and water are disappearing. For the 200 species who live here, the coming months will transform their home into a drought-ridden battlefield. Two outlaws have split rock in their sights. At three years old, they have reached sexual maturity and have been kicked out of their own pride to prevent inbreeding. They are now nomads, searching for their own territory and females. By sticking together, they increase their chances of ousting dominant males and taking over a pride. One picks up on the scent of a female. But his brother smells blood. The remains of a kill. They might share their journey, but they don't share food. Although thick manes protect the throats of adult males during a fight, the brothers aren't fully grown and could be badly injured. But to starving outlaws, the reward outweighs the risk. The dry season is tightening its grip on Mala Mala. The effects are felt everywhere. Life for the pride hinges on the hunt. Each lion needs to eat five to seven kilograms of meat a day. Hunting as a group helps them catch large prey. But the whole pride has to share the spoils. They need to make a big kill to see them all through the next few days. and they use the drought to their advantage. 
Water is scarce, and the buffalo herd make a daily pilgrimage for their grazing grounds to the shrinking river. These massive herbivores are highly dependent on water. But to get to the river, they have to pass directly through lion country. Where there's a reception committee ready and waiting. The sparse winter grazing has weakened the herd, but however lethargic, they're no easy target, and they carry a deadly hidden danger. Many are infected with bovine TB, which can be passed on to the predators and scavengers who feast on their carcasses. The lionesses take up their stalking positions. They have good acceleration, but little stamina. It's vital they get as close as possible before charging. But success can never be guaranteed. Their quarry is quick off the mark. The stalk fails on the rocky ground. Another hot and hungry day lies ahead. It's August and the dry season is at its peak. Even in midwinter, temperatures can soar to 36 degrees centigrade. The pride is feeling the effects. Patience is running low. Even the cherished cubs are quickly put in their place. Despite the heat and hunger, Scar summons the strength to remind the neighbors who's the boss. The outlaws get the message. A lion's roar can be heard up to eight kilometers away. The strangers are in dangerous territory. And it's not just the dominant lions they have to watch out for. Shadow and her clan are on the prowl. Hyenas and lions are mortal enemies. They compete for both food and territory. Both sides fight fiercely to survive when times are tough. But right now, Shadow has other priorities. She's ready to mate and time is pressing. Every 12 to 18 months, she's only in season once. But she's still choosy. As the dominant female, she will only mate with the top ranking male in the territory. Females are bigger, bolder, and definitely in charge. Even during courting, the males are submissive and fearful. The mating is complicated. Female hyenas have reproductive organs similar in shape and size to the males. Getting into position is an awkward business and a tricky test of nerves. There's nothing tender about Shadow's flashing teeth. When the mating is over, the male skulks back to bachelorhood, leaving Shadow to raise his cubs. Like the hyenas, Shearer and her pride are a fiercely close-knit family unit. There's safety in numbers, but even the most protective of mothers can't be in two places at one time.
Shearer is preparing to lead the pride on a hunt, but she has to leave her cubs in the den. It's a big risk, but she has no choice. Without food, they will all die. Some of the Mala Mala residents look out for each other. For the jittery Impala, having baboons and monkeys close by means extra eyes and ears. An invaluable alarm system. Unsurprisingly, there's no love lost between the primates and the predators. A tip-off from the trees can easily sabotage a hunt. But it can also serve as a warning to other dangers. At the border of the lion's territory, troubles flared. Bushfires are common during the dry season and devastating. If the wind picks up, it'll whip fire through the park. Many of the smaller animals won't escape. And Shearer's cubs are home alone. Huge flames light up the sky. And there are many other dangers in store. The darkness draws out the nocturnal predators. Lila is upwind of the fire. She has picked up the scent of a male leopard in her territory. Her dappled coat provides perfect camouflage amongst the leaves. As usual, the neighbors are on the prowl. Lila escapes to a higher vantage point to survey her territory. She's not the only leopard out tonight. Kubala patrols his hunting ground. But the stalkers being stalked. Drifters back. Kubala has his sights set elsewhere. But he's not fast enough to save his supper from his younger, quicker rival. The older ruler's starting to lose control. Drifter enjoys his poached meal. His intimidation tactics are working. Whilst the rivals scuffle, Lila's been busy. But an adult in parlor is a feast for greedy eyes. Hyenas are expert hunters, but stealing a kill is usually much easier. Lila is young and inexperienced, and outnumbered. Oh. 
Hungry and frustrated, she returns to the safety of the trees. Nearby, Shira and her pride are following the buffalo herd. And tonight, they're using a different tactic. Instead of lying in ambush, they've been following the herd for some time. creating an intended panic. As the herd scatters, the buffalo lose the advantage of numbers and Shira can select her victim. young bull's horns can kill. Normally, the males help to bring down prey this large. But Scar and Tyson are nowhere to be seen. The pride perseveres without them. And the ancient struggle is played out again. Predator and prey fighting for survival. The bull weakens, pulled off balance by the relentless assault. Scar usually issues the final, fatal bite. Tonight, it's up to Shira. The bull's death has brought a few more days of life for the pride. By morning, the fire has burnt itself out. Parts of the split rock territory have been badly scorched. With the only source of water here, the buffalo have little choice but to stay. But the Sand River can't save them all. Many of the buffalo here carry a potentially fatal virus, bovine TB. They can live with the disease for years, but when they're weak, it can take a lethal grip. The herd returns to the river, one less in number. The water's evaporating fast, but the mud relieves their fly-ravaged skins. As it dries, it leaves an impenetrable coat, protecting them against bloodthirsty insects. Further up the riverbed, the baboons search for water. The effects of the dry season are starting to be felt by everyone. As the weak fall, scavengers flock. Another buffalo falls prey to the perils of the dry season. His scavenged carcass could pass on the deadly virus to the predators who feed off it. But animals must eat where and when they can.
Back at the kill, the pride is still gorging. The two young outlaws approach unnoticed. There's still plenty of meat on the carcass. And Scar and Tyson are nowhere in sight. Although lions are fiercely territorial, sharing is part of their social nature. Sometimes strangers join a pride and feed on their kill. But Shearer has a large pride to feed and doesn't welcome the intrusion. Her chances of evicting the strangers look bleak. Until the old guard arrive, sharing isn't part of Scar and Tyson's plan. This is their pride, their territory, and their food. The intruders know this is one battle they can't win. The old rulers are bigger and stronger. Flight seems the only option. They can't risk a mauling by these two old warriors. The outcasts lurk on the fringes, hungry and dejected. They will need a few more seasons to bulk up before they can launch a sustained leadership challenge. In a final statement, Scar makes his mark, scent spraying to confirm his dominance. Order is restored for now. But Tyson is fatally weakened, losing his battle against TB. He probably contracted it from an infected buffalo carcass. The brothers are living on borrowed time. In a far corner of the territory, another old ruler is fighting to keep control. Down on the ground, Drifter is preparing for a final showdown. He's waited to make his move, and now he has a chance. Kubala is in a compromising position. Stuck at the top of a tree, with his belly full from last night's kill, he has no escape route. If Drifter's challenge succeeds, he'll get to Lila first. Kubala has everything to lose, but he's cornered. He's won many battles, but today he's been caught off guard. And off balance. With a single swipe, his rule is over. He limps away to lick his wounds and nurse his pride. After her meal, Shira heads back to the den. She needs to find her cubs. Cubs are often left alone for long periods of time and will only come out of hiding when their mother returns. But her calls are unanswered. Mm. 
The grass gives up a secret as a lone cub stumbles from his hiding place. Mm. But where are his sisters? Did Shadow pay a visit? Shira will never know. All she can do is focus on her son's survival. October arrives and change is on the horizon. After months of drought, storm clouds are brewing. As night falls, Shira and the Pride return to the kill. Scar and Tyson are in no mood to share. It's a brutal lesson in respect. One of Shearer's sisters bear the brunt of Scar's attack. The lionesses make the kill, but the males control the feast. Tyson tries to back Scar up, but his body is weakening. His days are numbered. Distant rumbles herald relief for everyone. Rains wash down, restoring life to the savannah and its residents. Months of tension and stifling heat wash away. Over the coming weeks, Mala Mala springs back to life. Scorched earth is reborn as lush pasture. The buffalo are refueled with energy from the rich grazing. All over the park, males preen and posture as competition for females heats up. Soon there will be a new generation in Mala Mala. Further along the riverbed, Drifter is also making his mark in his new territory. He and Lila have begun their courtship. She induces mating by presenting herself to him in a crouched position. It's a tense and noisy affair.
Lila's in season for seven days, during which they'll mate continuously. If they are successful, Lila will give birth to cubs in just over three months' time. She will spend the next year and a half nurturing them to adulthood. Then, like her, they'll be on their own. Many residents of Mala Mala profit from the rain. For some, the combination of cool sand and water proves irresistible. Shira and her pride on the move. But one lioness is in trouble. Shira's sister has been suffering since Scar's attack. Her injuries are slowing her down and she's struggling to keep up. Shira's priority is the safety of the pride and her one remaining cub. Even if it means leaving her sister behind. Injured and alone, hunting will be hard. Fending off hyenas even harder. The night will bring a tough test of survival. As darkness falls, the rest of the pride prepares to go to work. The breeding seasons brought new and easy targets. Young calves have no chance against a large male lion. But the buffalo herd won't give up on their young easily. They fight to save their calf, but it's too late. The lifeless body is surrendered to the lions. And there's a new face at the feast, Shira's son. The tender flesh is perfect for a cub to cut its teeth on. Scar shares his meal. Gently initiating the next generation to the realm of carnivores.
Tyson hears his pride nearby, but he can't muster the strength to join them. Disease and drought have battered his body beyond recovery. On the outskirts of the territory, Kabbala has made a kill and managed to evade the muggers. Shadow and her clan have their eyes on an even softer target. Shearer's injured sister has found a lifeline. Scavenging could be her salvation. But she's not the only one who wants to pick these bones. Shadow smelled carrion. The lioness must make a desperate decision. Outnumbered and injured, she's in dire straits. But she'll starve to death unless she stands her ground. Staying put is a chance she has to take to survive. She still carries the fearful reputation of her kind. It's an uneasy truce as enemies eat side by side. December, and the height of the summer will bring new life and death to Mala Mala. Lila and Drifter are nearing the end of their week-long mating marathon. This is the first time Lila has mated. Now it's time for them both to return to their single lives. It could be two years before she and Drifter meet to mate again. <coughs> Further along the Sand River, Tyson has managed to drag himself to the water's edge. Lions can survive for long periods on fluids from their prey, but Tyson hasn't eaten for two weeks. TB has riddled his lungs and destroyed his respiratory system. His wasted body is near breaking point. In a far corner of the territory, Kabbalah guards last night's leftovers, but he is under siege. A pair of young hyenas have recently left their den and are practicing their survival skills. They wait patiently. 
tussling over scraps. Hyenas will often harass a leopard in a tree until it drops its kill. Even the safety of the branches doesn't calm Kabbalah's nerves. But the youngsters didn't allow for a bodyguard. A two-ton rhino is a big distraction. But the youngsters aren't giving up that easily. Kabbala has had his fill and quits while he can. The hyenas are just rookies, but they've still managed to rattle the old ruler. And Kubala's not the only old guard who's hit hard times. Scar's empire is crumbling. He's restless and alone. Tyson's life hangs by a thread. He's too weak to leave the riverbed. His breathing is shallow. His strength is slipping away. Tyson has enjoyed a life filled with challenges and change. He and his brother fought bravely, sired new generations, and defended their territory and their pride. has fulfilled his legacy. One last breath. And he surrenders his territory. His brother calls into the distance. It's now up to him to defend Split Rock alone. It will be a tough job. There are many younger lions around who will challenge him for his crown. He'll need to muster all his strength to protect his pride and ensure that Tyson's last cub survives. Power in Mala Mala is precarious. Territories are hard to win and hard to keep. Even the mightiest predators live in constant peril. The future of the pride lies on Scar's shoulders.